When I think of mediocrity in video games, I often think of movie and TV show times. Gigantosaurus Dino Kart is one of those. It's the latest in the Gigantosaurus gaming franchise. Yes, there is one. <laughs> and this is a one to four local multiplayer only Dino Kart racer. There's some great theming going on here, but outside of that, there's very little to write home about because this feels like the most reductive, simplified and basic kart racer that I think I've come across in oh, years, genuinely years. And that's a real shame because there's something here that could have been really, really good. But instead, it's as if it's been shoehorned into a very, very tight production schedule and then pumped out. In this game, you choose from the variety of dinosaurs that are on offer. And the best thing about this game for me is the way how the carts are designed. Odd, I know, but it reminds me of like really rubbishly made cam toys because the wheels are made from boulders and they kind of clonk around a little bit. Everything's made out of like sticks and like environmental fruit and trees and bamboo. And you can see how it's all been like pulled out from the prehistoric era and made cartoonish and quite fun. The actual tracks themselves, and there's 15 of them, um, also lean into the theming quite nicely. So you've got like dinosaurs grazing on the sides, there's like mudslides in the background, a little bit of lava flying around in some of the levels. And one of the best kind of standout bits of this game is that Gigantor, which is kind of the titular character, also walks onto the tracks at some point during each of the levels. So when you're racing around, usually on lap two and three, you'll see on the map there's always like a little red area, and this is basically the bit where Gigantus, Gigantor sorry, is going to wander around. And so sometimes you might have to kind of swerve out of the way to dodge him. It just makes the track feel slightly more alive than the dull, simplistic, reductiveness of everything else in this game. You have to cling to the little things when you're reviewing some of these games, I have to say. Now, when it comes to the actual gameplay itself, there's nothing wrong with this. It just lacks personality and individuality. So steering is simple, obvious, easy. It's not too oversteery or understeery. Just like the three little pigs, this one's just right. And the problem with this is that you've got no kind of skill level required to get around any of these tracks and part of the reason for that is that this game employs the race with Ryan philosophy of let's automatically turn on auto drive and auto steer so you don't have to do anything. Now that's great for young players who are just getting into kart racing but even when you turn some of this off it still felt like I was being pulled to the center of the track sometimes and I wonder if that was a weird bug that's occurring or whether it's just my brain was playing tricks on me. But everything still felt very sedate and slow and benign. Even when you're getting multiple boosts, it doesn't ever feel fast and you never feel particularly challenged or threatened to get round a corner, if that makes sense. The other thing around the boosting system is that it's very hit and miss as to whether or not it will do any boosting or drifting at all. I would say three times out of ten whenever I hit the, the drift button it didn't trigger but it's very difficult to tell whether or not you're drifting or not because the graphic subtlety of whether or not you've even gone into a drift is so tiny you only notice that you've not hit it when the sparks don't fly which give you the option to then say that you can let go and get a little tiny boost. The other thing is that there's no incentive to do long drifts in this game because the boost doesn't get faster or longer if you hold that drift. So you're doing a little tiny boop, 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 boop around corners, which feels a little bit clunky and odd to me personally. There's also a blatant lack of modes in this game. There is only race. There's no time trials, or eliminations, or any of that sort whatsoever. You can't race with the weapons off and have a pure kart racing game. So yeah, it feels really, really reductive and just a very bare basic game that's been put out with some lovely theming, but even that doesn't like make up for the lack of options for you to play, the lack of tracks, or even if you just went around them in reverse, that would be awesome. And then you'd have it doubled to 30. It's just, there's nothing here that could make me recommend this game over hundreds literally of other kart racer games that are out there 
even other TV show or like cartoon tie-in games does do the kart racing better than this. And I'm thinking the Nickelodeon ones that have recently come out are like head and shoulders above this. So if you're in the market for a cartoon or movie tie-in kart game, I'd recommend that over this 100 times out of 100. Written review will be over on higherplanegames.com. I wasn't surprised that this felt very basic cash grabby and weird odd movie tie-in e, but yeah, I was genuinely surprised at how little this game had to offer. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.